Hello everybody, welcome to a new series I'm introducing on this channel called Off the Cuff, where I literally go completely off script, and I'm just going to talk to you about whatever the topic is. Now, I chose today's topic because not only did I just finish it like three or four hours ago, but also because I was thinking about writing a video for this, but then I remembered with my latest video that I was doing, but I find that when I put everything to the page and at that moment it's super passionate and I'm very excited about whatever I'm doing, but then I get to now where I'm like recording this into a microphone and I'm reading verbatim the words that I wrote on the script and everything just feels so disingenuine that I wanted to go ahead and just do this video um, sort of completely impromptu, completely improv, um, and just see what comes out of it. So this is Off the Cuff. What remains of Edith Finch? So off the bat, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that I'm not going to spoil anything in this video because I think that this is something that needs to be experienced on its own and me sort of describing things to you isn't going to necessarily have the same effect that playing the game would. I know that the person who gave me this game, my friend Moo, uh, wanted me to avoid spoilers and, I, and so I did. And as such, I'm going to tell you to avoid spoilers also and go check out this game for yourself because it's, uh, it's super good. I'm... I'm normally not really into like the walking simulator like kind of explore like layers of fear that had like a horror element to it so I kind of gave it a pass Soma kind of had a similar thing going on but in what remains of Edith Finch I believe they'd taken the walking simulator formula and crafted this story around it in such a way that the presentation is done so masterfully that you don't really care about the fact that you're not really doing anything for most of the game aside from when you have to like interact during certain story beats and stuff like that. You're largely just watching a lot of things happen and having a story told to you. But I found myself in the position where I was so intrigued by what was being told to me that I didn't really care about the fact that I wasn't doing anything, honestly. The game, first off, let's get one thing straight. This game is beautiful. The imagery is immaculate. Looking around at all the various, you know, uh, the scenery outside of the house, the scenery inside the house, the very, the, like, fantasy visuals that come in during some of the story sequences are phenomenal. And I think that they have some really cool ideas here for how to tell a story. Uh, one certain segment that I won't get into, but there's essentially two different kinds of game happening at the exact same time. And visually, it's one of the most interesting things I've seen in the game. And secondly, I didn't realize that I could actually, uh, like multitask my motor skills in a game that, like I did because I managed to do one task and also maintain the other task at the exact same time. So that that was a really cool feeling. Now, getting into the story without spoiling anything, I'm just going to say that this is one of the most heartfelt games I've played in a long time. The voice acting in this game is phenomenal. You, I, I, was, I was believing everyone's performance. Like everything felt authentic. Even like the child act, voice acting didn't feel like you know, they were just reading off a script or anything. Everything felt very real. Everything felt, felt very authentic, you know, which is important when you're telling such an emotional story. And that's the other side of this. This is a very emotional, a very sometimes heartbreaking, sometimes heartfelt, sometimes wholesome, sometimes melancholic. There's so much happening in this game. It made me feel so many things in the matter of under two hours, mind you, because I don't think I spotted everything. I only did one playthrough of this game before I sat down to do this, so... Did the whole thing on stream that's probably gonna be a vod on the channel but anyways point being i feel like i've missed a lot of details and i'm probably gonna have to go back again to like try to work my way through it but the basic gist that i'm getting to here is that the game was great i'm happy to have played it i'd be happy to recommend it to people i think it's a great story i think it's it manages to distract you from the fact that it is just a walking simulator at the end of the day and it's fascinating there's so many different game mechanics that come into play. There's so much stuff that changes in like each story. Um, and the tone, the tone while changing constantly, it manages to have like a flow to it. Despite the fact that it changes frequently, I never felt like, oh my God, this tone shift is really sudden and like has caught me off guard and feels really out of place. Nothing ever felt out of place. The story flows. They've written it in such a way that everything flows into the next thing. 
everything transitions into the next thing. Nothing ever feels forced in this game. And uh, like I said, everything just feels very transitional. Uh, you kind of have that feeling of seamlessness. Uh, uh <laughs> fuck! Seamlessness. Seamlessness? Yeah, seamlessness is what I'm trying to say. And it, ju it just feels good. It's just a game that feels good to play. So I highly recommend it. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I have no idea where I'd put it on a scale, but honestly, it was just, it was a really fun experience, and I really enjoyed playing through it, and, uh, I would definitely recommend it again, so, that's about all I have to say, this has been Off the Cuff, with me, uh, we'll see if I do more of these in the future, who knows, but, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, bye!